Here we are, now we are recording uh, a few more seconds. And then we can go on. Right, so we are at the point uh, at which we have started to look at applications of linear algebra or of this very, very, very uh, minimal snippet of linear algebra that we have formalized um, in sections 7.1 and 7.2. And we have seen that uh, uh, functions from R to R form a vector space. Now, next we are looking at polynomials. So uh, polynomials are also functions um, from real numbers to real numbers. So in a certain sense, they are trivially, they trivially form uh, a vector space. But perhaps we can be a little bit more precise uh, about polynomials because it, as it seems that you have already seen uh, polynomials can be represented by list, by list of their coefficients. Polynomial of degree n are characterized by n coefficients. So the question is whether um, we can perhaps use vectors uh, to describe polynomials and whether we can describe operations on polynomials in terms of linear transformation and therefore uh, suitable matrix, matrix vector multiplication with suitable matrices. So this is the idea. So the idea is that we start by looking at uh, uh, polynomials of degree n. And uh, we have our usual representation of, uh, uh, of vectors as tuples of real numbers, uh, or let's say of elements of a field, in this case, real numbers, let's say. And uh, so one question is, what kind of polynomials could the um, canonical base vectors possibly represent? And this is something that perhaps you have already seen. Uh, the idea here is that the case canonical base vector, so the base vector that consists of all zeros except at the kth position represent the monomial x to the power k. So that's that's the idea. Um, the other important ingredient in this representation is this observation that uh, uh, any polynomial function can be described as a linear combination of monomials of x to the power zero, x to the power one, and so on and so forth. And uh, then, you know, since, uh, since the, um, the canonical base vectors represent monomials, and since polynomials can be represented as a linear combination of monomials, it seems very natural to ask ourselves whether uh, general polynomials can be represented in terms of linear combinations of canonical basis vectors. And uh, the answer is yes. And it is given by this function eval p, uh, which is a kind of specification here, if you, if you know what I mean. So we do not have a data type which is called zero dot dot n. So this is not, this is a specification. It is not, uh, it is not a program. It is not a Haskell program. And, uh, but it is clear what is meant. Uh, and so the idea is how the code looks like. And again, it will turn out that the abstraction that we have introduced are very useful. So let's have a look at the code. So here is the idea. So polynomials and their derivatives. So polynomials of degree n can be represented by vectors um, with real scalars 
on this kind of index type, so zero to n. And then the function from real to real form a vector space. This is something that we have seen a few minutes ago. And we have this specification of eval p. So eval p, so the evaluation of a vector that represents a polynomial uh, has to give back a function. And so we define uh, what kind of function eval p of a vector gives back by defining how this function x on an x on a real number. And then there is this implementation. This is, this is specification. This is meant to be uh, the result of uh, you know, mapping uh, this function that uh, uh, takes i to vi times uh, x to the power i on this set of indexes. So this is not an implementation, but this specification suggests that eval p is, because of the sum, possibly a linear transformation. So perhaps we can define eval p by just saying how eval p x on the canonical basis vector. And this is the reason why I've been flanding and hammering on this idea of defining a linear transformation in terms of its action on the basis vector, this f composed with e. And this is going to be also the scheme that we will apply for all the examples that we will uh, discuss in the rest of this lecture. So let's consider, for instance, the case of polynomials of degree three. So this is again the usual. So we are building here one of this uh, index type, which is called G3. We are making it an instance of bounded by saying that it starts at zero and it tends at three. So these are x to the power. These are meant to be vectors that represent function x to the power zero, x to the power one, x to the power two, and x to the power three. And we have our instance of enu. And here it comes this idea of building a function that goes from elements in G3, elements of the index set, to the vectors that uh, are represented by these elements, which are functions from real to here, to, to real. So this is in, this is, the name is eval P3E, that meant to be eval P following E, following the canonical basis vector. And this is just defined to be the function that uh, for G takes X in X to the power G. So then the idea is that since we have defined how eval p x on the canonical basis vector, we can use our usual construction with linear combination to completely define eval p3 on the whole set of vectors uh, of degree um, at most three. So you see, we have here the representation, the syntax vector real G3 into function from real to real. And this is just obtained by, for a vector, which is described by the function V, by building the linear combination of V with our usual F following E, which is in our case, eval, eval P3E. And, uh, so this is the idea. So we have here now, for instance, uh, a representation. We can have a look at this representation. P3 is one, two, three. So that means that it is uh, uh, one plus uh, two X uh, plus three uh, X to the power two. Uh, we can define it as a linear combination of our basis vectors. And uh, then we can, uh, we can apply eval P3 in order to obtain a function from real to real. So for instance, we can uh, eval P3 uh, 
P3. So this is a function. We can apply it to zero, for instance, and we get one. No, because we have one plus uh, two times X uh, plus three times X square at zero is one. So we can apply it to, I don't know, to one and we get six and so on and so forth. So we have, what I want to say is that we have, uh, what's going on here? Yeah, sorry. Uh, we have constructed here this uh, linear transformation, eval P3, but by just constructing, first of all, the action on, of eval P3 on the canonical basis vectors and then defining the whole function in terms of our uh, combinator, linear combination. So that, that's the message here. And this also is going to be uh, the scheme that we will apply all the time. So then two questions to you uh, to think a little bit about, can we define the matrix associated to eval P? So uh, can we, for instance, uh, uh, transpose this eval P3E? And if not, why not? And then the next question is about derivation. And for derivation, we go back uh, to the lecture notes. So uh, derivation of polynomials, this is also something that you have already seen many times. Uh, this idea of, uh, um, of building a commutative diagram that I've tried to represent here that connects the representation level, in this case, polynomial of a given degrees n plus one. So this is, this is the, uh, wait a moment, highlighter. So this is here the representation of polynomial and the one on the right hand side is the result of applying the eval function to this representation. Let me just refresh to get this highlighting uh, clean. So, um, so the idea is that we are looking, we are looking for a function that we, we know is going to be a linear transformation that maps representation of polynomial of degree n plus one to representation of polynomial of degree n. And this is what I've called derive or what they have called derive here. And the idea of uh, the idea is that we already have, we have seen two minutes ago, we have a function that maps representation of polynomial to polynomials to function from R to R. And we know how to derive functions from R to R, perhaps not in general, but we know how to derive polynomial. So the idea is that we are looking for uh, a definition of this linear transformation derive that makes this diagram commute. That means that if we first derive a representation and then we apply eval P, we get a function which is the same as we would have obtained if we had first applied eval P and then applied our rule of derivation of polynomial that we know. This is the idea. So uh, this, this construction is done by equational reasoning in this block here. And you see that in the first, in the first line of this block, we have eval following derive of a polynomial of, of a canonical base vector of the canonical uh, base vector e i plus one. So we have eval following derived. So that means that we are moving along this branch of the diagram. So we first derive and then we eval. And uh, uh, the specification, the commutativity of this diagram is what we are invoking here, the specification, in order to uh, require 
this to be equal to d following eval. So d following eval. So we are now moving on the other side of the diagram. We are moving this way. So the rest of the uh, the rest of the block is more or less trivial now because uh, d following eval p. So eval p we have it defined. We know how to, how uh, the um, I plus one canonical base vector gets evaluated. This is just the function that uh, maps x to x to the power I plus one. Well, we know how to derive this function. This is I plus one times x to the power I. Well, and we know that this is in fact the eval P of uh, the vector I plus one scaled with EI. So this is the idea. So this is this is how we have used uh, how we have used uh, the specification, or if you want, the diagram in order to build this relationship. So now uh, we have here we have here this expression and this expression, and it is clear that this equality is satisfied that a, a sufficient condition for satisfying this equality is just to define derive E i plus one to be equal to i plus one uh, scaled with E i. So, and this is the idea of this equation here. And then there is the observation that uh, uh, x to the power zero, so one times x to the power zero is the constant function C. So that's no problem. So let's uh, have a look at the code. So at the code level, we want to have a linear transformation that uh, goes from polynomial of degree three into polynomial of degree two because derivation diminishes the degree by one. And uh, so I have again, as usual, uh, introduced these kind of special in instances of, uh, um, um, of index types. And then again, this is the usual derivation. So how do we define this linear transformation by prescribing what is the action of this linear transformation of derive on the canonical basis vector. Um, and this is done by defining this function, derive following E for the case of a polynomial of degree three. And so deriving following E for the case uh, of uh, zero is zero. And for the case of one is uh, one times the canonical vector is zero. For the case of uh, the second canonical base vector representing x to the power two, it is two times x, and uh, x to the power three is three times x to the power two. That is three scaled with uh, the second or the third, depending whether you start with zero canonical basis vector. So this is this is the implementation. So and then. As usual, there is nothing but saying that now the derivative of representation of polynomial of degree three, this is our function, our function derive for any arbitrary vector is just the linear combination of the components of that vector times the uh, so-called M or F following E, which in this case, in this case is called there of P3E. So this is the idea. So then we can, for instance, have a look at P2, which is a representation of the derivative of P3. And we see that this P3 was uh, one, two, three. So that was one plus two X plus three X uh, to the power two. And uh, this, uh, is the derivative which should be correct. So this is the derivative of one is zero, the derivative of two to the power x is two. So we have two to the power, two times x to the power zero, that's correct. And here we have uh, x to the power, we have three times x to the power two, this is three times two x to the power one. 
uh, three times two is six. Yes, it's six. So you see, this is this is the idea. So we have derived uh, a representation of a derivation. It acts on the representation of polynomials. So this is a function from polynomials, uh, from representation of polynomials of degree, degree three to representation of polynomials of degree two. So this is a function from vector real G3 to vector real G2. And this can be defined for you know, polynomial of arbitrary degree, and it can be defined also for power series and so on and so forth. So that's, that's, that's the idea. Uh, metrics associated to the derivative uh, uh, to their P3. So this is the linear transformation. Well, this is just the transpose, no? For instance, we can have a look at the columns of this matrix. Uh, what am I doing? This one. I wanted to copy this one. Yeah, so that's, uh, I think that you have to chat a little bit. So, so the, the, the transposition, the transposition of, uh, of this, uh, um, of F following E. So this is the first column is zero, zero, zero. So this is the derivative of uh, um, X to the power zero. So the second column is uh, one, zero, zero. So this is the derivative of X to the power one. Yes, this is one times X to the power zero and so on and so forth. Uh, right. So let me just uh, uh, for a short moment stop.